it's the Rosenthal's. Thanks so much for coming on, Daniel and Phil. And you are debuting a brand new album today. That's right. As we speak, right. and I'm going to hold this up so that the camera gets it. And describe to me what Fly Away is all about. Your bluegrass, your folk, What mm -hmm. what's on this album? Well, my background is mainly folk and bluegrass, and I've been playing it since I was about 10 or 11 years old. And Daniel uh, grew up loving jazz and playing that, and uh, he's the one who had the idea that we should do an album together that kind of merges the music. Uh, and how long ago was that? So, well, we've been playing together for... Your whole life, you because know, you're in a musical family. Right, yeah, right. Yes. 20 years since I started playing trumpet. But it was, yeah, it was only in the last couple of years that we decided, we started playing actually as a duo. Uh, and we kind of figured out some musical styles that worked for the two of us and started writing music. And so basically we, re we recorded this CD over the last, oh, about a year ago, and it's just out now. So we were working on it for about six months. All right, so what are appetites a little bit for the folks at home so they can hear what it is that's on here? Right. Okay, yeah, okay. we'll do a little banjo and trumpet here for Sure. You. One, two, three. So that's pretty poly. No, no that's the name of the original. Song? That, uh, oh, that's Phil an wrote. original. Yeah. All right. So let's do some background now. You are a former Connecticut troubadour right. from 1994. Right. What is a Connecticut troubadour? Well, it was a designation that they set up a, a couple of years before I was chosen. Uh, that the uh, the legislature decided they should like put the spotlight on one musician every year who does mainly traditional music, but something that you know kind of appeals folk style primarily. So I was the third one that they selected, and now there was no uh, duties connected with it, no salary connected with it at that point. But it was a, a nice highlight for me, and I, you know, kind of drew attention to what I was doing. So what did you do with your title? Because I've talked to a lot of Connecticut troubadours, and they they start playing in schools and they launch albums off of that. What did what did you do for that year that you were a Connecticut well, troubadour? Well, nothing different than what I've been doing, you know, for many years up to that point. I I just play a lot at libraries and schools and you know parks and and, and give lessons, and I I kept doing it, um, but. Uh, people, I got people's attention more quickly when I said, by the way, I'm the Connecticut State Troubadour. I said, oh, well, maybe. So maybe who's we'll better than me, right? Right. <laughs> okay, you grow up in a musical family. Uh -huh. your, your dad's a musician. Your sister's a musician. You mm -hmm. are. Your mom. She you, also plays bass. She also plays yeah. bass. Yeah. And you, put, you have your own family record label. Right. Called? American Melody. All right, named after... We just we we figured we're going to be doing a lot of American you know kind of folk songs, so we wanted the word American in there and the word melody, just so you knew it was uh, music primarily on the record label. Do the four of you go on the road sometimes? We have, yeah, mm -hmm. we've we've played around. And As a group, no we fighting. haven't gone too far. Yeah, you, yeah. But me and my father went. To, we've been to Europe. We've been to the UK before. But it's harder yeah. to fund a four-piece band than a two-piece band. Right. So when we're traveling, you know, locally, sometimes we play more as a three-piece or four-piece band. But Daniel, give me some of your background uh, uh, about music and where you went to school right. and how this came together. So I grew up in Guilford, uh, and then I went to school at New England Conservatory in Boston. So I did my undergrad and graduate studies there in music. Uh, and I've just been in Boston ever since then, and I teach trumpet lessons and play music professionally in a variety of different groups. How many, how many different groups? Uh, so I lead my own jazz quartet and quintet. N Go and, ahead and um, name it. Just plug away. Just so that's the, the Daniel Rosenthal Quartet or Quintet. <laughs> okay. And then I play in a group called the Either Orchestra that's been together. Uh, it's a Boston-based group that does jazz, Latin, and Ethiopian type of music. Wow. That group's been together for about 25 years. And with that group, I've been to Europe, Africa recently. We went to Ethiopia, actually. And we've recorded, traveled around the US. Uh, and I also play in some salsa groups, um, other projects on the You're side. You're all over the map with the yeah. music. 
Yeah, when you play trumpet, uh, you can't discriminate when people call yeah. because it's not the most uh, sought after instrument ever. It's not like play, playing guitar or something like that. So you just have to learn how to play every type of music and take what comes. Can you, and this isn't rehearsed, but can you give me a few little notes of what Ethiopian jazz might oh. be as opposed okay. to what we're here? Give us yeah, a little lesson a different, on the trumpet. Well, they use a different uh, type of scale than in the US, in the American and Western type of music. Uh, so they use more of like a pentatonic scale, and they have a lot of a variety of different scales, different modes. So one would be like this. So you see, it's got a different sound to it, as just because of the notes that they choose, as, as opposed, opposed to. Or the blues scale, you know, in Western music. So just using different notes and taking, like not using some of them really gives it a totally different sound. All right, Dad, how did you know that he was going to take up the trumpet? <clears throat> he came home from school one day, I think he was in maybe the fifth grade, and he announced that they had done a demonstration of various instruments and he really wanted to learn the trumpet. So he said, really? Because I have to admit, you know, my dream was that he would take up the banjo or the, you know, the fiddle. But we said, okay, well, we'll rent one and see how serious you are. And we, we rented one, and he was obsessed with it. I mean, just from the start, he just really loved the trumpet. Uh, and at one point, I said, maybe you should listen to, uh, or I bought him a Louis Armstrong record. Mm -hmm. I said, maybe listen to him for a while. And he, he fell in love with Louis Armstrong's music, and he just bought every CD he could find. And, and then he went from Louis Armstrong on to other people you know, over the years. But yeah, just got he, obsessed uh, with the trumpet sound, and then jazz, and then following all the different jazz artists, especially trumpet players first, like Louis Armstrong, then Dizzy Gillespie, all the greats. Miles Davis, yeah. kind of like through the progression, yeah, the evolution. What's the end game for you, to be a solo artist or always be in a band with your dad or up in Boston? Oh, I, well, I like to do a variety of stuff. Like, I mean, I, I love working with my father and also my sister, Naomi Summers, who sings with us too when she's around, uh, and then also leading my own group. So it's, it's really just like whenever I can do something where it's creatively fulfilling, and with with me, my father and I, you know, we write the music together a lot of it, uh, and we produce our own records since we have my father has a, a home recording studio in Guilford, so we get to be our own bosses. So that's really yeah. like the best. You're and, calling your own shots. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're the producers. Phil, you've written some songs, even mm -hmm. uh, played by Johnny Cash. Yeah, Johnny Cash, Bill Monroe also recorded uh, a song of mine. So. What song? Uh, I've got a song called Muddy Water. Uh, it wasn't one of his biggest hits, mm -hmm. but it, he did a great job. Uh, and the song has been done by a lot of different Can bands around the world. Do you know it off the top uh, of your head? You know, head? without my guitar. You should play it on guitar, but. I should have brought my <laughs> guitar. <laughs> That's okay, we that. got the banjo, so we'll go with that. Yeah. We're in the wrong tuning for that, right? Yeah, you know, I'm not in the right tuning, but take my word for it, you'll, lo you'll love the song. But how <laughs> thrilling is that, that? How did that happen? How did you get that piece? of music into the hands of Johnny Cash. Well, it sort of evolved. It, that song actually did a lot for my career. I wrote it and there was a band called The Seldom Scene, who at the point at that point was like the most popular and my favorite bluegrass band. And I, I wrote the song with them in mind and I got it to them and they recorded it and it became a very popular tune. And a few years after that, they were looking for a new lead singer. Their guitar player and lead singer was leaving the band, so they thought, Let's call Phil Rosen. We we like his writing. Let's see if he wants to audition for this for you know the spot in the band. So the, I did, and and uh, that song led to my you know joining that band in uh, 1977. I went from obscurity in New Haven, you know, playing in bands around here, to suddenly I was the lead singer in you know, like the most famous bluegrass band around. And then a few years after that. Um, uh, we were playing a show, and oh, actually, Emmy Lou Harris was playing in Washington D.C., and I, I didn't know her, but the other members of the band knew her because before I was in the group, she used to hang out and uh, used to live in Washington D.C. So we went backstage, and I got introduced, and she said, "Oh, you're the you're the songwriter. You wrote Muddy Water." She said, "You know, Johnny Cash just recorded it, you know, and I'm the one who got him to do it." And I said, "Really?" What are the odds? Yeah. So sometimes that you know personal co con a connection like that can you know lead to something good happening. So this new duo that you have put uh -huh. together, what are the plans for that? Do you hope to be recognized again as this great duo to to relive some of the stuff that you did in the 70s? Is is that is that the end game? They can really 
take this group away and be just really Not famous? Not really. I mean, the, the thing about this group is it, it really is a blending of the kind of music that I have played all my life and I've always liked the folk and bluegrass and kind of traditional music. And then Daniel, who's really the producer of the album and had the idea that we should really, you know, let's get serious about, you know, doing a record and touring more. He really kind of brought his own, you know, influence and his jazz sensibility into the whole thing. So it's really a blending of two different musical styles. But we do so. hope to become as successful. See, there you go. Well, we See, would. there's yes. the money yeah. making yeah. right there. Right. <laughs> when you go to write songs together, how uh -huh. does that happen? I well, have an idea, Dad, or Daniel, I've got a, how does, how, yeah, do, right. how do you collaborate? Well, there's a couple different ways that we've done it, but on this album, on Fly Away, um, most of the tunes that we wrote together actually uh, were set, sets of lyrics that Phil wrote about 30 years ago, and that he had never really successfully put to music, or for some reason it didn't turn into a tune. Um, so I actually, you know, I'm coming from more of a jazz background and writing instrumental music, uh, so I hadn't had that much experience like writing tunes with lyrics actually. So that's like something I'm trying to get more into, but I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it. So I asked uh, my dad if, do you have any lyrics I could try to set to music or something like that? And he had like this big pile of stuff from like, you know, the 70s How and 80s. How thrilling yeah. is that? Your yeah. son's yeah, going through your stuff so, and said, let's right. make so this So he found public. some yeah. good ones and right. then, you know, I wrote, some, I wrote some music for it, showed it to him, and it turns out that he could play it, it sounded good. So that's what some of the tunes yeah. on the album are. And... Um, I don't know if we ever like we, we don't really sit down and like say like let's write this tune together. Yeah, so we it's usually work like, like he'll work on something and yeah. then show it to me and then I'll add something to it so we can collaborate like that too. So you don't strum a, a, a little tune and say what do you think of this, Daniel? We haven't done that yet, but maybe at some point we'll we'll start writing yeah. some t songs that. Yeah, we way kind of too. work more separately and then yeah. show each other what we have and then you know come back and then make some adjustments. What's the hardest thing? And maybe there isn't the hardest thing about this working together, father son. Or is it just a complete joy? Uh, the, Don't the, lie. Yeah, the only <laughs> negative thing is that, that Daniel lives up in Boy, doesn't live yeah. at home anymore. Yeah. So you yeah. know, the, our time together to, for working in the studio is you know somewhat limited because he's busy. But now there's with Skype career. and all of that, right. right? But on Skype, you can't both be playing at the same time. We've tried to rehearse on yeah. Skype. Yeah. And it's like you get an interference if there's two instruments from coming from both ends at the same time. It cuts in and out, so it's not right. that great. Well, trust Maybe they'll me, improve that. There'll be a platform but, uh, soon, I'm sure, yeah. where you yeah. can do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're both a joy, and it's so exciting to meet you and to see what you're yeah, doing. And you. I just I want to hold this up again. This is the Rosenthal's Fly Away, and it debuts today, and we're excited to have them. So you're going to play us out, and thank yeah. you both for being here. Thanks for having much us. Much success with this. Thanks so much. All right, take it. So this is a tune from the album, we'll say. It's pretty poly. Yeah. Whoops. Got to retune. That was Make sure we're in the right key, key. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now we're, we're ready. Tuning. All right, now we're ready. Heart. 
heart's blood did flow. He stabbed her in the heart, and her heart's blood did flow. And into the grave, pretty Polly did go. Ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. 